welcome everyone. We'll start in just a moment as we allow some time for other people to get connected in. We wanna say hello, welcome to all of our Amherst community members and we thank you for joining us on our community chat today. My name is Brianna, communications manager for the town. We'll be holding short live chats like this on Tuesdays and Thursdays at noon for the next couple of weeks. Um, in this webinar, we do ask um, to ask a question from the Zoom application. You can click the Q&A button to type your question. Your questions will only be visible to the hosts of this meeting. Additionally, if you'd like to speak, please use the Zoom raise hand button or press star nine from your phone. We ask that you introduce yourself before speaking and to main a civil discourse. As a reminder, this webinar is being recorded, so please refrain from asking any personally identifying health questions. So today, joining your town manager, Paul Balkaman and I, we have the Amherst Director of Senior Services, Mary Beth Ogilewicz. I had to practice that. Uh, <laughs> welcome to you both. We're gonna have the chance for folks to ask Q&A today, but before we launch into questions, are there any general status updates, Paul? Hi. Hi everybody, thanks for joining us today. Uh, pretty much things are in status quo. We're happy that our, the um, Coley Dickinson Hospital is managing well under our circumstances. Our call volumes for our police and fire is at historic low levels, which is really good news for us. Uh, we continue to have cases in Amherst, but not at the rate that are, is happening in other communities. So I think we're in pretty good shape. Uh, today it's about, uh, the senior center and what's happening with our seniors. And so I really want to focus it on Mary Beth. And so Mary Beth, where are you today? It doesn't look like your office. <laughs> That's correct. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm so happy to be with you today, virtually. And I am actually in the poll room. So if I stand up here, you can see here I am, where normally we would be using the weights that are located down here and doing some exercises and movement. But this is now my headquarters for now. And the reason being is that we have been busy remodeling and refurbishing the senior center. So uh, when everybody returns, you're going to find that it's a beautiful, beautiful place for us to gather as a community. We have new carpeting. Uh, we've had the walls painted. Today we have countertops being installed. The kitchen's been remodeled. Um, and it's all been designed with an eye towards accessibility in terms of disabled persons and those who may need further assistance. So it's going to be absolutely beautiful when we're able to open again. So this is where I am live and we're here every day still. So please don't forget to call us if you have any needs or we can support you in any way. No, it's been amazing how you've kept the senior center functioning and expanding its, its outreach and, and helping people connect with you on multiple levels, whether it be food or uh, counseling services or um, just a friendly call. So uh, talk a little bit more about what those things that, that you're, you've added since, you, since, since we can't have people come into the senior center anymore. Yeah. Well, a couple of things that we've done is we have shifted our food distribution. So we used to have a congregate meal where everybody would come and have a hot meal together. We have shifted to that being a takeout meal. So folks can come, any Amherst resident who is age 60 can get a free lunch here. So it's a takeout format. You just dial and call us up at 259-3060. We'll register you. We just need two days advance notice and you can get a free lunch Monday through Friday. So it's a fantastic opportunity to set kind of support your own nutrition and also sometimes get out of the house. So people either drive up in their car or we have uh, six feet cones and tables and people walk up and then we deliver the meal. We're also still doing our Meals and Wheels delivery. Um, and then we're still doing the Survival Center boxes. That's a wonderful program. And again, there's no income eligibility. If you are a senior, again, contact us and we'll help you through the paperwork we'll walk you through. And we have about 60 different persons who are receiving boxes of food. Uh, it's been fantastic. We've up to that amount. There are two huge boxes intended to support you for an entire month now. So we deliver those to your doorstep and we also are still doing the Western Mass uh, food bags. And again, we now deliver those to you so that you don't have to come out of the house. We've added in um, masks. So 
uh, we've begun to uh, uh, add some press and media to that. So any senior who needs a mask, we've been working very hard. We've donated 10 boxes of fabric to community sewers uh, throughout the whole Pioneer Valley. And they've been bringing them back to us in groups of 20 to 30 masks. So anyone who needs a mask, again, call us and I will deliver them to your doorstep. And then most importantly and excitedly, we have been going online. So we've all been figuring out how to do Zoom. So many of our classes, the exercise classes and healthy bones classes, yoga classes have been recorded. They're on Facebook and also on Zoom. So if you would like to connect with that, please let us know. And then also our yoga teacher has, I've connected her with Amherst Media and her yoga classes are now posted on Amherst Media. And she's also been working, she has young children, so she's uh, just recently recorded a, uh, a family yoga class that parents can do with their young children. So we're trying to also be good neighbors, not just for our seniors, but for the whole community. And lastly, um, what we're gonna be rolling out this week is all of our support groups are going to be going online. So grief support groups are online, caretaker support groups are online, and our Aging Together group will be facilitated by Dr. Bruna Martins from UMass, and we will be working together online. So we're looking forward to doing more online and figuring out how to reach people. Great, thank you for that update, Mary Beth. Sounds like you guys are pretty busy above and beyond your normal um, busy schedule. So thank you for that. I just wanna remind those who are joining us, if you would like to ask a question, you can hit Q&A or raise your hand in Zoom, star nine from your phone. We do have a couple questions um, if you guys are ready to launch in. Sure. Okay. So this question I have here for Mary Beth, um, I'm concerned about a friend. She seems very depressed and anxious lately being alone all the time. How can we help her? And the first thing that I would say is to contact us. So again, our number is 259-3060. Uh, our first level of sort of triaging those kinds of problems is we connect those individuals with our social workers and they do an assessment around how somebody uh, is feeling and what kinds of supports they might need. We have low level supports in terms of volunteers who do well-being calls on a daily basis and check in with someone, which has really been a wonderful connecting point. And then we also have social workers who call on a daily basis and can do a little bit more therapeutic work uh, in terms of helping people to name how they're feeling and, and help them through that. Another level of support we also have is we've hired a nurse so our senior center nurse, Karen Rainin, is online as well. And so she often calls people who might have uh, co-occurring diagnoses or more complex presentations. That could be- Here We have a few important updates on schools, oh, child care, and the launch of this. There is, that go. The, <laughs> is that the governor Zoom bombing? Yeah. <laughs> So, so we have we have those levels of sports, and then lastly, I have something that I'm very excited to be launching is we're going to be working with the psychology department at UMass and Dr. Bruna Martins, who has worked with our senior community in my Live Your Best Life program. She and her doctoral students will begin running a Zoom program, so an online program that people will be able to access by either dialing in on their phone or through uh, using their computer and coming online or their phone. And it will be um, a support group for how to get through this uh, very complex time. What has really come across for us is that when I speak to people, what I'm hearing is grief and that we are going through a period of time of collective grief. There's been a lot of loss. I and mean, people say, when I say, oh, it sounds like you have grief, um, it's not necessarily that someone has passed away, but there's been a loss of routine, a loss of gathering, a loss of worship space. And so it really helps join these groups. Uh, it normalizes the experience that we're having. It also helps us to name it because if we name it, then we can feel it and work through it. So she is going to be a tremendous asset. It's a free uh, group that people will be able to access and we will be posting that information on Facebook, we're also going to be sending out a newsletter in a couple of weeks, and you can call the Senior Center and get more information on that. But I want people to know that if you are having any struggles, that that's something that we're all experiencing. And you know, we can help each other 
uh, with this scaffolding and that it's not a linear process, but we can make our way together by kind of walking each other through. Great, thank you. That sounds like it's gonna be a great resource. Mm, it will. And you have two, two social workers on staff who are able and will and available to, to help people. And I also know that sometimes you'll have a, um, someone who lives out of town concerned about their parent who lives in town and worried about the connection with that. Are you able to help with that too? Absolutely. So we actually receive probably on a daily basis two to three calls from adult children um, who are out of town in Boston or some other location that are concerned. And we can absolutely follow up. And then depending on what the level of information is, is some of it um, we won't necessarily be able to share, mm -hmm. but we always circle back and let family know. And, th and that honestly has been a wonderful um, asset for us. If people calling in and saying, geez, I'm a little concerned about so-and-so. Um, and we can follow that up. So our two social workers are working remotely and they are there Monday through Friday, eight to four and making hundreds of phone calls every week. Yes. So we have, a, we have another question here. I was signed up to get my taxes done for free by AARP. Will they still be able to complete them? Yeah, so nationwide AARP suspended their program until further notice. And at this time, we don't have any information that they will be returning and in terms of what that date is. So what we've been advising people is the deadline has been extended both for federal taxes and Massachusetts filing till July 15th. So if folks want to give a certain amount of time that they feel comfortable in terms of waiting to see if we have AARP coming back, they're welcome to do that. We are not endorsing any other uh, individual tax preparers and also advising people that if they don't feel comfortable waiting for that period of time, or if they want to file because they need that return money to go ahead and do it on their own. So there, there are basically three options that people have at this point in time, since we don't know if they will be returning. Those volunteers are not able to take um, any tax questions on their own because unless they are working under the auspices of AARP, they can't perform the work. So folks can um, either uh, hire a private preparer. Uh, the second option is they can try to e-file on their own. So that would be www.irs.gov backslash file. And then the last one would be if they might know a friend or a family member or an adult child or perhaps a niece or a nephew who might be able to help them to file on their own. That would be the other form of assistance. But right now we don't have any information that they expect to return before July 15th. Okay, great. Uh, another question here is when do you think the senior center will reopen? Mm. <laughs> that, that is the million dollar question. So we certainly know, uh, you know, we're gonna have a brand new, really beautiful remodeled and refurbished center. And we'll be waiting to see what rolls out in terms of advice, both from the CDC, the federal government, and also the town and Massachusetts councils on aging. So I will say that we are part of a state organization, statewide Massachusetts councils on aging, and they spearhead um, a collective uh, wisdom for 350 plus communities throughout Massachusetts. And they have been closely watching what's been happening in China in terms of how they are um, opening senior uh, uh, services and functioning and taking wisdom and guidance both internationally, nationally, and also within the state. So they work very closely with the governor and with the executive office of elder affairs and we will all be collaborating to make that decision when the time is ripe. So we don't have a firm date, but we do know that at some point we will all be back in here together. So just to add to that, so, so I've closed the buildings and you know, the bank center, all of our buildings uh, until May 4th. And today we expect to hear from the governor in terms of, uh, and, the, and this aligned with what the state had done. So today or tomorrow, we expect to hear from the governor about what his decision will be about, you know, or advice will be about closing schools, whether it's going to be till June 1st or to the end of the um, academic year. If um, he closes to the end of the academic year, that will tell us a piece. Of, that'll give us a piece of information. 
Um, we try to stay aligned with our operations, with how the state is managing and advising people. Uh, his stay-at-home stay advisory is still in effect until May 4th, but I anticipate he'll make some kind of call on that uh, today also. So we will continue to align ourselves with what the state is doing, just like Mary Beth said. Great. Thank you. Um, there's a couple new participants who look like they've joined from the phone. So I just want to remind you, if you'd like to speak and ask a question, press star nine from the phone or from Zoom, raise your hand and we will acknowledge you. Um, so we have another question here. I am in need of a wheelchair. Do you have, do you have one that you could loan? Yeah. At this point in time, our medical equipment loan program has been suspended. Um, as you can well imagine, that was a decision that uh, we were aided with the um, Board of Health in terms of there being a risk of exposure and cross-contamination. I know that um, Stavros was still lending um, equipment for folks. I've had a number of calls for bed rails, um, walkers and wheelchairs as people have convalesced. So they are still an available source and they have a hospital grade uh, sanitation machine. Um, it's tens of thousands of dollars. It has like ultra violet lights and it sterilizes equipment in a way that makes it consistent with hospital standards of sterilization. So that's one resource. And in terms of other councils on aging and who might be loaning equipment, I also know that the Westfield Senior Center um, is collaborating to, um, to clean and work with some equipment and they were doing some loaning. But for right now, we have had to suspend that um, out of um, just a, a sense of safety. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, we have someone here who is stating that they're in a vulnerable age group, but they still um, are healthy and would like to volunteer in some way. Um, do you have any tips for um, seniors who might want to volunteer during this time? Absolutely. So one of the best ways to work with both the anxiety and grief that people are feeling is to engage in some kind of taking care of one another. Uh, that's just all of the research shows that that's a great way to help people um, to get through and navigate this really challenging time. So um, people who are interested on our website, we have some online fillable forms. So people, if you have a skill, you can offer the skill. So we've had some people, um, you know, they're going grocery shopping and are happy to pick up another person's groceries. Other people have, you know, they're going to CVS and they'd like to help out and pick up somebody else's prescription for them. So we've been trying to match skill sets and ability. So it's not to say that everybody can and should volunteer, but for people who feel like they are able, that's a really wonderful avenue. Um, we also have folks who are making masks and sewing masks, um, and we have some other smaller tasks within the senior center in terms of helping us even with our newsletter um, and other needs that arise on an individual basis. So if people are interested, the best way again would be to contact us happy to help you let us know what our needs are on a daily basis and on a weekly basis and kind of fill in depending on what your skill level is and ability so you can do something small even as just calling a neighbor to sewing masks to delivering food for us great thank you um, we have another question regarding someone having questions about their medicare coverage and who can help them with that yeah. So one of the functions that we performed uh, quite briskly here at the Senior Center was helping people with the Medicare process, both in terms of enrollment and also problems they might have with coverage or other issues. And so that was, per that was performed primarily by one of our social workers, Michelle Schmura, and then also we had um, SHINE representatives. They were volunteers who assisted us. We are still doing that work. So folks who might have a problem or a question or needing to enroll in Medicare, please do contact us at the Senior Center and we will link you with one of our volunteers or our social worker who can help walk you through that process. It's a bit more challenging because we can't meet face to face to review documents or scan them or send them, but we will figure it out 
Um, it might be a little bit more uh, taxing or laborious in terms of the paperwork and mailing things back and forth, but we're still providing that service and we'll wanna make sure that people have all the support that they need to assure that their insurance is up to date and that they're getting the full coverage and the full benefits that they need. And we had a, another question that just came in from Jennifer. Can the Senior Center help with healthcare proxies? Oh, I love this. I just, I swear to God, I just wrote down in my notebook, healthcare proxies. And if there was one thing that I could do in this whole community, it would be to say to every single person, please sign a healthcare proxy. So right before uh, we closed down, the week that we closed down, I had a presentation that I was gonna be working on um, that we had organized about healthcare proxies. A healthcare proxy is basically you naming a substituted medical decision maker so that if you should become unable to communicate your desires or wishes for your own health care, there is a named person who can execute that on your behalf. I will tell you in my conference calls with Cooley Dickinson, the first thing they ask me is, how many of your seniors have health care proxies? And I say, yes, that is exactly my, my number one um, you know, campaign that I wish that I could uh, implement right now. And a healthcare proxy does not require an attorney or any special person to execute for you. There are downloadable forms. Um, you, and if you can't download one, again, call me, I will mail you one. I have hundreds of them here and you mail it. And basically all it is, is you name a person. One person is what I would recommend to make your decisions for you should you become unable to communicate them. And then you have to have two witnesses sign that. So that becomes a little bit more problematic. It just come with two pens. You can even come here to the senior center. You can ask neighbors to sign it. It doesn't require a notary, just two individuals. Make sure that they, they witness it the same day that you execute it because if it's a different date, it will be deemed um, uh, ineffective. So uh, it's an important document to name them and then also to talk to those people about what your wishes are. Um, with this particular virus, um, your medical condition, what we know is right that it can shift rapidly within 24 hours and your desire to go on a ventilator or not would be a critical discussion you should have now while you still have all of your faculties and you have the ability to think about how that might feel and even perhaps the duration that you would like to be on a ventilator. But it's, it's much better to have the conversations and to designate those people and then make sure that that person that you designate knows it because if the person doesn't, isn't aware of it, um, they can also decline to serve. So you wanna make sure that you talk to that person, say, I'm gonna name you as my healthcare agent. So I, I, know, I, I read recently um, how some people are getting, you said you have to have two witnesses uh, with who witness you're signing this. And so what some people are doing is they're in their car, they sign it, people can see from outside their car, and then they can validate that they watched you sign it. And so that's a, a clever way to sort of do the social distancing by being in an encased structure in a way. Yeah, and you could even just drive up here to the senior center, two of us can walk out and that's, and that's, perfectly adequate. That's great. Um, and, the, and the attesting is really just that you are, you are over 18 years old and that you are of sound mind and body making this oh. decision. It doesn't require any sort of, um, you know, uh, expertise or, or a notary or anything like that. But please, everybody in the community, every single individual should have a healthcare proxy that includes people who are 18 years and above. So all of my children, who went off to college, I made them execute a healthcare proxy before they left my home. So it, it's a really important tool for us right now. Mary Beth, do you have any tips for people who have questions about either updating a will or don't have a will right now and they might be afraid of being um, sick? Yeah, um, I, I, well, I think that first of all, people, um, there are misperceptions about wills. So, so I'm not sitting here as, as necessarily someone who's giving legal advice with my legal hat on, but I, I can draw on that background knowledge to share with people is that a will only in, uh, controls the disposition of assets that don't have a named beneficiary. So what that really means is if you have a bank account with somebody else's name, 
that asset does, is not controlled by the will. It is controlled by the other named beneficiary. So it would automatically go to that person. It wouldn't be subject to any provisions of a will. So the, the quickest thing that I would tell people is that if you have assets, this is a great time if we're sitting around all day long to check on things like IRAs and check on other assets you might have and making sure that there's another person's name on it so that if something should happen to you, that asset immediately devises to that named person. And that it's the person that you still name. So sometimes people put a name um, on, on life insurance when they started a job 25 years ago, and that person might have passed. So you wanna make sure that the beneficiaries are up to date and they are in fact the persons. But every, you know, your assets from your motor vehicle to stocks, to IRAs, to any other um, asset that has the ability to name a beneficiary. That is the quickest way to make sure that your intentions um, are followed through and, and you're able to do what you want. In terms of whether you um, execute a will for any other assets beyond that, um, again, that, that would be a matter of, of hiring an attorney, um, and having that conversation. We do have community legal aid, which is still um, performing work and still working in the community. And they do do wills for elders, uh, you know, based on income eligibility. But I know that they are very backed up in terms of the cases um, and sort of prioritizing emergency legal aid, legal aid as opposed to something that is um, uh, more about planning. Um, assets. So, so that's what I would make for a suggestion for people. Yeah. So I would, should, I should know that, uh, well, Mary Beth is an attorney and really is very knowledgeable in this field, one of the most knowledgeable people in the field. She's not offering legal <laughs> advice, right? As, as you said, right. <laughs> um, but she is uh, really knowledgeable. This has been a specialty before um, she came to work for the town of Amherst, um, working for a large law firm. So she really knows her stuff. So if she says this is important and I'm taking away some of this information too, it makes sense. I already wrote it down on my to-do list yeah. for when we're done. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we probably have time for just a couple more questions. I'll do a last call from our attendees, um, star nine from the phone, raise your hand from Zoom or use Q&A from Zoom. Um, we have a question here regarding someone who's about to be eligible to sign up for Social Security in uh, the coming weeks, and they're wondering how they navigate this. Mm -hmm. So Social Security is still functioning, albeit uh, in a much slower fashion. So uh, an individual, if they need to access and begin the process to sign up for Social Security, they can choose to do the online forms. So that's one option, and that's probably one of the quickest options. The other one is, is that they do have an 800 phone number uh, that you can call and someone ha walk you through that process. That tends to be a bit more time intensive and there are very, very long wait periods. Some people I know have been on the phone for up to six hours waiting for somebody to answer. Um, if you don't have access to technology and you'd like to get some assistance to fill out the online form, we can also help you. So our social workers have helped a number of clients who need some assistance in terms of signing up. What we have also seen is that a number of individuals are electing to receive social security at the earlier stage due to some of the economic insecurity that is happening right now. So typically, it behooves you to wait uh, uh, several more years before you access Social Security so you can receive a higher portion of that amount of money. But um, some people are having to elect earlier options. So again, contact us if you don't have the ability, but they are still uh, accepting applications and processing them uh, in a slow manner. Great, thank you. So. Are there any things, Mary Beth, that you'd like to share that you weren't asked directly today about any services or programming that you have going on? Uh, the, I think that the, the most important one really was just emphasizing that we're going to be trying to offer some more online programming to help people around boredom and also some of the emotional aspects. And that's something that it takes courage to ask for help and to acknowledge that 
that you might be facing a challenge. And um, I find that, that um, we have a lot of people offering help, but not as many people acknowledging that they might be having a struggle themselves. And so I think that for me, the most important message that I wanted to share today is that um, it helps to be part of a group that's having a conversation to name and feel what is happening because then we can all help each other to process through it. So please uh, don't hesitate. Our Aging Together group will have the ability to have up to 300 participants in it. Um, and they are fantastic experts. Dr. Martins, as well as her doctoral um, candidate students are gonna be assisting and will be doing a different topic each week. And I think that that's gonna do a lot to not only help us get through but to heal through this entire process because we're looking at a long duration. Great, thank you so much, Mary Beth. Paul, did you have any yeah. parting words? Yeah, so while we are on, uh, the governor announced that school will not reopen this year, uh, this academic year. So the students will be home and with additional um, distance learning opportunities uh, being developed. He has not made any uh, recommendations in terms of opening up the economy at this point in time. We're still at the nearing the peak of our pandemic in Massachusetts, so that's news. And but the only thing I would say is it was great to see Mary Beth. I don't see her as often as I used to. No. It, it's it's <laughs> fun to, to, for us to connect as well as it does, is for the, the general public to see us too. So thanks for being here, Mary Beth. Oh, thank you. It's such a pleasure. I love my job and I love this work. It is such a thrill to be here. I have to tell you, there is no place I'd rather be during all of this than right here with all of you. So thank you for your leadership. I really appreciate uh -oh. it. You're doing great work. Great. All right. Well, that's all the, the time we have for today. I will say that we're going to be doing this again on uh, Thursday, the 23rd at noon with Health Director Julie Fetterman. And every Tuesday and Thursday for the next couple of weeks at noon, um, you can use the same link and the same phone number as today to join us in future sessions. If you have any follow-up questions, feel free to email us at info at amherstma.gov, or you can contact the town manager's office by phone at 413-259-3002. Thanks. Thanks, Brianna. Have a great day. Yeah. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.